Welcome back, everybody. This episode one of Let's Play Sorcerian will be going into the first adventure and creating our characters here. First up is Penny the Dwarf, since two people voted for it. I figured something was up, so I googled it, and I guess it's a Game of Thrones reference. She hasn't been on the show yet, so I don't, I don't know. Next up is Fenwick. I'll kind of explain the stats as we go along. Uh, strength and Int, and PRT and MGR, Protection and Magic Resistance, are uh, Physical and Magical Attack and Defense, respectively. And Vitality has nothing to do with hit points. It's actually exclusively for opening doors, and I'll want to be putting it on Sorcia here, which um, I think is a Gaelic name, and I'm sure I'm mangling it. Um, I'm doing some scumming here. Because you get a, bo a random amount of bonus points when you create a character, and I just wanted more than three. But uh, you want to put Vitality on your designated leader, because you need it to open doors. And as you go deeper into the scenario, uh, doors take more and more fit to open. With final character Shaggy, I wanted to show off some additional features of character creation and give him a beard as well. So you can age your character in increments, and as you can see, elves live a long time. Uh, they they don't even hit middle age until 106, and you can age them up to the very cusp of senior citizenship. So you get one bonus point for every increment you age. And I want to pump Shaggy's Karma, because while elves live a lot longer, they level slower, and Karma is sort of a charisma substitute, and if you get it high enough, you level faster. Uh, another way to get bonus points is to reduce your existing stats. You get one, one point for every two you reduce. And I take down his dex because, uh, from what I had read, like Vitality, uh, it was only something you need on your leader because it's for avoiding traps, but more about that later. So let's go ahead and take our new characters into the city of Pentawa. Everybody goes in individually and they have to buy their starting equipment, and there's not much else you can do at this point. Well, I could send them to college, but I'll probably be doing that next update. And we'll be exploring some of these other options once we get enough money. I go to church here because if you try to pray every year, you have a better chance of being resurrected when you die. If you die. That's about all we can do in town for now, so let's head into Scenario 1-1, The Stolen Scepter. And the basic plot of the first adventure here is that the King of Pentawa had a scepter which was able to protect the kingdom from uh, monster attacks, and it also kept him from aging. And somehow the Oaks have stolen it from him. So we need to get it back. This blue ball here is a key item that you sort of ferry back and forth between the two different paths through this adventure, and uh, you can only have one path unlocked at a time, basically. For, for no good reason, I decided that Fenwick would be the herbs master of the party. One of the things you can train in is herbal knowledge which uh, allows you to automatically make a new potion when you use a potion if you have the herbs to create another one. Uh, these guys I'm ignoring are goblins. These crystals, there's two of them. I think they're optional, actually, so it's not such a big deal that they're in completely obscure places. Now you notice that we kind of janked forward a little bit there, that's because I'm trying to sprint, and that's where I think I gimped us by reducing Shaggy's dexterity. 
Like, we have no ability to sprint, really. It may be because he's old, it may be because he has low dex. Uh, this is a hidden switch. It uh, opened up a door down in the bottom path. We'll be getting there in a minute. Anyway, I probably would have shaved a couple minutes off this episode of Shaggy, well, if we had been able to dash, but... <laughs> C'est la vie. Sometimes the game will have these, uh, descriptive text pop up without, without you necessarily interacting with anything, and this demon here is obviously the key to opening that door. But we can't do anything with it now. In this room, there's Bogards. I don't know if they're supposed to be Bogarts, or... Fatal Fury heroes. Uh, I decide to fight them for no good reason. Certainly not for experience. There will be a actual battle worth fighting later on, so don't worry. From the start, the the path to the rear of the room is the one that leads down here. And this is not a speedrun route. I could have uh, gone back at a later time and got that herb, but do what you can in this life. Now the second crystal is up here, and this is actually the upper side of the room that leads to the bridge. And I'm checking my map here, but I'm assailed by skeletons! Yeah, this room in particular, uh, skeletons come up out of the ground. They usually try to come up inside your party. And that's bad editing. I, I did some stupid backtracking there. So there's really nothing of interest on the top side of this bridge, and I'm pretty sure I edit it out for every future uh, trip I take through here. If you've noticed that when I attack, uh, Shaggy is swinging his wand while uh, Fenwick is not, that's because Shaggy has one strength while Fenwick has like negative seven or something. Uh, you can't actually swing your weapon unless you are positive strength. Uh, I think intelligence and magic work the same way. I definitely appreciate the interest I've had in the thread so far. I know it's not Danganronpa, but I hope I can entertain you in some small way. It took a couple days longer than I had planned to get this update out, but uh, between crippling anxiety and school, well, taking this jar with water. Checking for herbs. Checking for herbs. I really don't have the herb locations memorized, obviously. So this room has bats, if you can even see the tiny things flying around here. The fighting is so stupid in this game. You know, this game is just, it's really just janky as hell, but there, there's no, there's no sugarcoating it, but I love it. Here I'm messing with the equipment. The way that magic works, uh, spells are tied to your items, and you put spells on the items by enchanting them in town. These two jars do not have water, it's where you put the two crystals from before. As soon as you put them in, they trigger. And right away you can just take the crystals back. And the puzzle you just solved will stay solved, it doesn't deactivate. And I meander. 
aimlessly around this room for a second here. But the reason I say that the crystals are probably optional is because they drain a certain area of water, and all the water does is suck your HP slowly, which you'll see here. And we'll be back to this room in a moment. Back on the topic of magic. When you press or hold the magic key, everyone in the party will just continuously cast whatever magic is associated with whatever item they have selected at the moment. You can put spells on any equipment by enchanting them at the magician's house, but you can also find items and adventures that come pre-enchanted. All of the spells in the game are made by combining enchantments of the seven gods, and some gods hate each other and will wipe other gods' enchantments, and it's just, it's all a big, tricky mess if you want to get a specific spell on an item. I guess you could say it's a deep system. Putting the water in that jar made this demon statue appear. And there was our first trap. I believe what anti-magic trap does is drain everyone's MP. And the switch activates something in the upper cavern there, which we're not, we can't access just yet. Not from here, anyway. So you're probably wondering why I even have spells without enchanted items. Well, the the starting wizard equipment all comes with latent spells built in. The cane has a version of the fireball spell that doesn't cost MP. That's why they're able to continuously fire. Crystal Ring has a heal spell. I edited out another trip back to the start there. So sorry for the jump cuts, but you didn't want to see it again. And the, uh, whatever the other one is, I think their robe, uh, it comes with a shield spell on it. We probably should have visited this guy earlier, uh, but this is Goran. You can talk to Goran again to get a hint. And I like this part coming up here. Just in the context of the game, I think the way he calls out to you is pretty neat. Well, I need the blue ball here, and I don't have it, so... Teleport! Really good job, Sorsha. You're getting really strong now. I'm sorry, I'm not electrical beast. That was easy enough. We've reached the upper part of that cave network. The switch I flipped earlier uh, deactivated a force field on the demon statue so I can get the jewel that we've been needing. I accidentally put the jewel back in and the trap triggers again, which is kind of a dick move. <laughs> what memory loss trap does is, um, I think what it does is if you've, if you've taken any particular training, like uh, herbal training, monsters, traps, or the other one, whatever it is, you just instantly lose that knowledge, which is like two years out of your life. So we don't need the blue, well, not for now. We'll be going back there in a minute. We need to go through that, that uh, cave-in area.
But first we need to take the jewel back to that demon statue we uncovered in the room with the acid drops. Alright, so we're about to fight... We're about to fight the boss here. I hope you're ready for this. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna equip my cure and my shield magic, even though I'm not entirely sure what shield even does. Most bosses don't... can't be hurt by most offensive magic, so the fireballs are honestly useless in this fight. And oh my god, it's a Hydra. What will... oh, it's dead. Oh, the other one's dead. See, 240 experience for, like, six sword swings. Is, I accidentally got an herb with sword shield there. <laughs> but, um... You know, there, there are tougher bosses later. Take my word for it. The Hydras are optional and have nothing to do with the Oaks or the Scepter. So we don't need the Jewel in that Demon statue anymore. And we'll be going back to put it in the, the other Demon statue in the room we drained of water. And I'm going to show off these, these little holes with the eyeballs in them. Eyes. If you try to interact with them, you spawn a bunch of giant rats. Which is not good for anyone. Nobody wants that. You know, be sure and let me know if uh, you think I could edit more. I, I didn't want to disorient you <laughs> with excessive editing but I, I realize that a lot of this is pretty same. Now regarding the oaks, you can't tell in the game so much. You'll see them in a minute here. But it's completely obvious from the manual art that they're supposed to be orcs. And in Katakana they were probably Oksu. And Sierra apparently just doesn't know what an orc is. So putting the jewel there has uh, opened up the, the cave-in area. And now we'll head back in that direction. If you ever see a weird jump with the status window, I, I just edited out some standing still. Okay. Another trip back to the start here. Closing in on the end. Uh, by the way, the, the music in this last part, I actually ran out of arranged versions of Dungeon. The song is called Dungeon. It's very original. Uh, I ran out of different arranged versions. I probably could have broken into like Dojin albums and found some other ones, but anyway, the music in this last part is from the PC-98 original, and I just I just play out the last five minutes with it because it is my favorite version. And here's the oaks we've been hearing so much about. <laughs> they drop these rocks very slowly, which do nine damage. And somehow they stole the king's scepter. Strength in numbers, I guess. So now we have access to the lower cave that was blocked, and we're close to the prize. Certainly the oaks have something in store for us, and it's an ambush! Ah, oh god, okay, 5 XP. Now the scepter is all you need to win the mission, but wait, there's actually secret treasure underneath it that you can miss. 
and in any case, we still need to leave the dungeon. If you go back to Goran here, he's healed. And, uh, well, he says he'll be back in town soon, so... I'm gonna go ahead and go pick up the blue ball and the jewel. I was seeing if he left. I don't actually know what it is that triggers him to leave, but he does leave. So I go pick up the blue ball and the jewel just to just to leave the quest with as much loot as possible. And check back in on Goran. And he's gone. He left behind his axe, which is good for us. We have to make this treacherous jump. Check the inventory. And we're back in Pentala. Home free. Good job, guys. So you actually have the option whether or not to give the scepter back to the king. Uh, you get XP and a tiny bit of gold. 46, which gets divided four ways. If you do keep the scepter, it's a staff for magic users that has the peace spell on it, which, according to the manual, calms monsters of all elements. But this is the screen where treasure gets divided. Like everything else in the game, it's janky. Um, if you, if you select Divide, the item will go to the first character in line who can use it, and then, like, they've used up their turn. So if you, if you divide another item, then it will go to the next person in line who can use it. So I, I accidentally reversed. I wanted Penny to have the axe, and Sora should have the sword. But it doesn't really matter. They, it, the axe sells for a lot of money, if you notice there, like 1200 and everything else is just worth five. So it <laughs> really wasn't worth the time to go back and get them. But that's it for uh, episode one. We've recovered the scepter, peace has returned to the kingdom, and we're gonna take a year off. In the game. Well, I'll see you guys in episode two, and thanks for watching.